Please mind the gap between the platform and the train. Hey there and welcome back. Um, we are standing here on this beautiful sunny day. Wait, this beautiful, technically very English, cloudy day uh, just outside of Winchester Cathedral. This is sort of the unofficial start of the South Downs Way. Uh, there is a new official start down at Winchester, uh, the old Winchester Mill, which we'll take a look at as well. Uh, I just sort of wanted to go over a couple of things about Winchester. It's, um, it's an old market town. So Winchester was originally a Roman town. Um, Venta Belgarum uh, was the Roman name, Latin name for it, uh, which also originally came out of an Iron Age town called Opidium, Opidum, um, that was originally on this site thousands of years ago. So a couple of cool facts um, about Winchester. First off, uh, it has the oldest public school still in using its original buildings. Um, secondly, Winchester Cathedral is one of the largest in Europe. It also has the longest overall nave of all Gothic three cathedrals, uh, which makes it stand out quite uh, in, a, in quite a special way. It is a stunning cathedral. So we're sort of working our way through Winchester. It's not very well signposted how to get to um, the beginning of the trail. So this is the official start of the South Downs Way in the uh, old Winchester Mill. You can't currently get in there because it's closed due to various reasons. But I think you'll agree much better start as a cathedral in a place like this is closed. out of Winchester. It's only about a mile from the station. Um, generally very simple to get get you know here from, from where from the station. It's not that complicated. I think I made it very complicated last time. Uh, cause a lot of people do start from the cathedral and there's no clear signs. Um, what you do just you stay on the pedestrianized area, keep going straight, veer off to go to the cathedral and then come back around. So we're about to cross the M3. Uh, the only actual motorway that we cross um, between here and Eastbourne, plenty of big roads, uh, A24, A27, so that's the only motorway we cross. Once we cross this, we'll uh, be into the countryside and we'll on our way to Eastbourne. So I'm standing here at one of, uh, I think it's four splits where uh, riders are required to go one way and walkers go another. Uh, it only splits in a couple of places, one is here, one is at Eastbourne, so there's no horses along the top of the cliff edges. Uh, I believe one is around Beacon Hill, um, and there is another one, which I cannot remember off the top of my head. Um, but this is where it splits, so we're going to go this way. And uh, most of the first start is first part is actually just uh, farm fields, so nothing particularly exciting. But let's go for Eastbourne. So, quick summary: South Downs Way is a hundred-mile trail that goes from Winchester in Hampshire to uh, Eastbourne in East Sussex. Uh, runs along the Chalk Downs of the South Downs, um, which is a narrow strip of, of chalk hills in the south of England. Um, very fertile, got very, very interesting and very unique um, kinds of wildlife here. It's, it's a very specific uh, environment for animals, and there are some animals that just thrive here and don't thrive anywhere else. Uh, which is why this is a national park and why it's so well taken care of. Um, along the way we're going to see some hill forts, old barrows, graves that were from the ancient people. Uh, we'll go through various old towns. Uh, Winchester being one of the oldest. So we're just passing through the little village of Chittingdon, Chittingdean. Chittington, I'm sure. Um, and I just read it back there, so you should know what it is. Uh, just walking along, doing a little bit of road walking right now. Not that exciting for the first couple of miles of this trail, honestly. Um, but we're about to do our first climb. Rain's been off and on already. Just kind of that drizzle that 
hangs on everything, but not really raining. So stop to take a layer off um, or put a layer away, I should say, and then uh, get my poncho out. You know, you're going the right way if you see these. Well, as you can see, currently don't have any views. Uh, big old long green tunnel ahead of us, behind us. Farm fields either side. Beautiful day though, even if it is a little damp. Aiming for, oh, what was the name of the pub? For lunch, anyway, I'm actually gonna take my time. We're only doing 12 miles today, or actually I think it's 13, because we're going just a little bit past Exton to camp. Um, fill up water either at the pub or the church. Church isn't actually a, an official water point, but I did happen to get water there last time when I was desperate. I could have could have filtered, and I do have my filter with me. Um, but uh, always easier not to filter. So we'll get filt water in Exton. Hopefully enjoy a beer there. Pub is on the way to Exton as well. But we're gonna stop for lunch. Um, and then we'll find a place to camp. Currently here at Cheesefoot Head, which is uh, what they call the gateway to the South Downs. Um, also known as Matterly Bowl, um, the West End of the South Downs, sitting at 173 meters above sea level. Um, the bowl was shaped by meltwater from uh, the last ice age, which was approximately 110,000 years ago, um, when it was eroding the soft chalk. Um, the streams that were created um, by the meltwater right across the landscape now clearly seen as the Tessinich rivers, uh, which converge to Southampton. So that would be this one right here, and I believe it's another one through here. So we're currently right here. Uh, we've got all this way to go, so we're going to stop and slow around here tonight. Valley you see off to the, to the left of us here is at Temple Valley. Uh, we're following this trail kind of along it. We don't dip down too much. Um, and up here we're going to take a right, which takes us over to Gander Down. Um, I don't, don't know a whole lot about it. This is all part of one big estate that we're walking through. A um, lot of history through here. Uh, this natural amphitheater was actually a, a gathering place, a natural gathering place for, for troops in World War II. Um, and there's a lot of diverse wildlife. You can see all these wildflowers that we're walking by. Not dead yet, still got plenty of life in them. Is it just me, or is that like the coolest green tunnel to walk through? You know, it's, it's absolutely beautiful through here. I'm loving this. Even down this way, we're going this way. This is what's ahead of us, but it's um, absolutely beautiful. We're out of the out of the wind, which is really nice. These trees, though, I believe they're all beech trees, but just so much character to them, so much age, so much life that they've seen. So one thing you'll notice, and I mentioned it earlier, um, is that the South Downs National Park and the South Downs is uh, unique in the sense that it is a farmed national park. A lot of the land on top and around it is farmed. It's crops, sheep, um, and other uses. It makes it, it makes it stand out. It's actually a very unique um, side of South Downs National Park that makes it stand out from everybody and everything else. However, this is, does mean it's not to everybody's taste. Uh, it certainly wasn't to mine initially. Um, 
But one thing that one of the reasons it is a farm landscape and why it is a national park is because this land and this area has been farmed for thousands upon thousands of years. The chalky soil is ideal for growing crops. The short grasses, the wildflowers um, are phenomenal for native butterflies, native insects. Um, but it has a lot of history and that's one of the reasons why, or it is one of the biggest reasons why the South Downs is a national park. The history, the archaeology. So I had to put the camera away because we just got nailed in a major rainstorm. Uh, I had the poncho on, but man, that hit hard and it hit fast. So I ended up putting on my waterproof trousers and my rain jacket and the poncho to keep the back covered. So along with rain, uh, makes the chalk very, very slippery, which means I just had a fall, uh, slid over, fell over. That was really graceful. Um, as I've said in previous videos, my middle name is not Grace. Sadly, the pub does not allow dogs when sitting outside, but at least I have a shelter which we're going to end up sitting under for a while. Rain is just coming down like crazy. Um, they also don't serve food here, so so much for my pub lunch. Uh, but I got the very exciting rich crackers and applewood flattened cheese. So I guess that's going to be lunch today. I'm glad I threw those in because I wasn't actually planning on it. Um, I'm having lunch, but. Uh, through these in just in case this morning. So yeah, just gonna enjoy my beer and uh, my other beer. I got they close at 2.30 and I got here about 10 minutes before closing. So we've been sitting here for about an hour and a half at this point and the rain just keeps getting worse. Uh, I kind of pull my phone, I don't usually like to use my phone on these trips, but um, I wanted to check the weather and see what was going on because as of yesterday it was 60% chance of rain, maybe a little bit of light rain from about 4 to 6, um, and you know, that's what I was expecting. Um, had a little 100% chance of rain now, obviously, um, and a whole lot you know, more rain, it's up to an inch, which is a big difference from 0.2 of an inch. Um, so yeah, if I'd have known this, I probably would have postponed a little bit. It's currently almost 5 o'clock and the rain finally looks like it's basically, oh my, the worst of it gone past. I looked at the, the radar and um, so basically at 8 o'clock it was supposed to stop. Actually, this is, seems like we got a bit of a break in the weather. Um, I did decide, however, I fed the dogs here and I'm actually eating dinner here while we've got the shelter. It's about that time. It saves me doing it when we get to camp. Um, and dinner tonight is some kind of spicy noodles, which are pretty good. But uh, yeah, so we'll, we're going to finish up here. Watch the weather a little bit. It's definitely brightening over that direction. And then we'll head out the last five miles or so to camp. Come on. Well, we got rid of the rain. We're heading this way. Behind that back of cloud is Beacon Hill. Um, but the cloud level has definitely dropped down quite a lot since uh, we were walking earlier. Uh, so we may not get many views up there, but that is where we're heading. Um, and I must admit, it looks really pretty right now. Um, whether we get views up there or not,
So it says the reserve lies at the west extre western extremity of the South Downs and is a superb example of chalk grassland with areas of scrub and woodland. Characteristic plants of this type of grassland include sheep's fescue grass with rock rose, yellow rattle, rest harrow, eyebrights and several species of orchid. Um, goes on to say, grassland is kept in fine condition by grazing the site at specific times using sheep and cattle. So things we can see, uh, Grizzle Skipper in a really good time of year to see this. And there's your rest harrow. So just to give you an idea, we just came in from this way. We are right here. We're gonna follow this along and down this way. So here we are at the top of Beacon Hill. It doesn't look like much. It's very flat. It doesn't stand out. We're currently using the trig point as a tripod, but we're looking that way, the, the, the weather's finally cleared out, we're getting bands of bright white cloud, we're getting patches of sun, the clouds are just zooming, zooming by, absolutely beautiful, I can't even pick a better evening to be up this high, um, absolutely stunning, we're seeing out there, a few areas where the steam is rising, where the rain's falling, but the sun's hitting it and the steam's rising off the, off the landscape, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, currently I don't even have words for it, so glad to be here. The sun's finally starting to show up, uh, so it's going to be a beautiful evening. I know I keep saying this, it may not be the Lake District, but how beautiful is that view? I mean, the way the clouds and the sun are highlighting just a little bit here, a little bit there. I don't even know if I have words for that, it's just it's so pretty, almost, um, yeah, it's beyond words in a very different way from the Lake District, so I uh, really can't compare the two. They're very different landscapes. You've got to take them each in their own way, in their own different kind of beauty. It's like comparing the desert or, you know, the mountains in Wyoming. You just can't do it. They are both beautiful in their own way, but if you look at the mountains and then the desert, and you'd be like, well, that's ugly. And you just, you can't use the two to compare each other. Oh, back out through Kissing Gate, not my favorite thing in the world. Oh, oh, goodness. Not one of the worst ones, honestly. Although, dog's trying to come through at the same time. Never easy.